so hi everyone this is jay your instructor for computer networks and we are going to discuss the http protocol so if you open web page in your laptop or in your phone you know that in the web page there are several objects such as there is a jpeg file there is a video there is an audio then there is a html there are different objects right and using the current web page you can access any web page over the internet and that is why it is called the world wide web so this world wide web it uses the http protocol at the bottom you can see that there is a website which is called www.somschool.com that line is responsible for the address of the server which is for some school but after the slash you can see that it is a path name so we know that in one website there are different things that we can access you can access different section on that website and that you can see as a path name so what is http the http stand for hypertext transfer protocol it is a web application layer protocol and it uses the client server model so using the browser you can request the server using the http protocol and server will reply to your request that you send using your computer with the same http protocol we are going to see how the client server communicate with each other with the http protocol in very soon so this is the example you can see that there is a pc and there is a server so you can web uh, you can access the web page using computer or you can access using mobile phone too right so when you want to open any website and when you are typing for example www.google.com so your computer will generate http request and that request will be sent to the server of google so when server receives the request it knows that this computer tries to open the website so server will reply to the particular device with the particular data so that we can see the website same process happen in the mobile too but the only difference in the computer in the mobile is that it uses different form right the size of the website in the computer is different than the mobile so the server knows whether you are accessing the website using phone or computer if you are accessing the website using phone so it will send the http request and you will get the message along with the data using which you can see the file that is the web page so let's see more about the http protocol in the http protocol the client uses the tcp connection and the port number is fixed which is 80 the server accepts the tcp connection from the client and http message exchange between the browser and the server and after that the tcp connection is closed so there are three main steps for the http in the first step there is a connection is established after the connection is established in the port number 80 the http messages are transferred between the client and the server and after the message are transferred and all the communication is done the connection will be terminated one thing for the http is that it is a stateless protocol it means that it does not maintain any history about any clients now the http it is having two types the non persistent http connection and the persistent http connection now let's see what is the non persistent http connection so in the non persistent http connection when client means your computer wants to connect to the server it will first create the tcp connection so it will first send the tcp connection request to the server after the request is sent 
the there will be more than one transaction will happen between the client and server after the connection is established only one object is sent over the tcp connection and after that object is received by your computer the connection is closed so what is the disadvantage in the known persistent http in the known persistent http at a time you can receive only one object from the server for example at a time you can receive only one image or only one file from the server so if you want to download multiple files so in that case non persistent http won't be that much helpful that's why we use the persistent http so in the persistent http the first step is same so in the first step your computer will send the connection request to open the browser to the server when server receives the request after that your computer can request more than one file in one tcp connection and when your computer is requesting more than one file it can receive that many file over one connection and after the data is downloaded the tcp connection is closed so let's see the example of the non persistent http so suppose your computer wants to open any website so it will first send the request to the server so when you type www sumschool.com.edu your computer will send the request at port 80 when the server receives the request it understands that the computer of particular ip address is trying to access the website so the server will accept the connection and after accepting the connection it will notify the sender that i have accepted the connection please tell me what you want from this particular website when sender your computer receives the acknowledgement that the request is received by the server and now server is telling you that what object you want from my website so your computer will send that i want to access this image please send me this image when server receives the request of the particular object it understand that okay it wants to access this image or this particular file so it will reply with that particular file so when your computer receives the file the server will close the connection so it will inform the sender that now the connection should be closed and when the request is received by the sender the connection will be closed suppose there is a one computer and server your computer is requesting and server is replying so connection is established you can see that it takes one rtt it means that round trip time after the connection is established in the non persistent http your computer will request for particular object and the server will reply with that object so it again requires one more rtt so you can see that to access one object it requires two round trip time if you want to access 10 objects if you want to access 10 image files so in that case it will take 20 rtts so it is very inefficient right so in the persistent http 20 files can be shared over one connection and it is more time efficient as compared to the non-persistent http so let's compare those two methods quickly in the non persistent http it requires two rtt per object the os is overhead for each tcp connection and browser often open multiple parallel tcp connection if want to access so many objects at a time in the persistent http the more than one packets can be transferred in one connection and it requires very lower round trip time as compared to the non persistent http now let's see the message format of the http request and the reply message 
the very good thing about the http request and the reply message is that those messages are in form of ascii it means that we can easily understand those messages so when you are opening any website you are typing just www.google.com right but in the background your browser is generating this request message and this request message is sent over the tcp connection to the server when server receives this request message which was generated by the browser it will reply to the browser when your browser receives the reply message it understand every line of that message but it just doesn't show that raw message to us browser converts that message into a graphical form so we can enjoy the website so that is the beauty of the http that there is an abstraction level using which the user doesn't know that there is so much is happening in the background let's quickly see the format of the http request message in the first line you can see that what type of request is that there are different type of requests are there such as get post head command etc then you can see that what type of website you want to access you can see that version what type of version the http has you can see that here it is 1.1 you can see that who is host what is user agent user agent means that what type of browser you are using you can see that here it is firefox you can see that what type of language you want to get you want to access you what type of encoding your computer is using what is the status of the connection all these things can be understood from this http request message after that when this message is sent by your browser the server will reply to this message and you can see that this is a reply message and in the reply message there are different parts such as the http protocol the server is using which is 1.1 then there is a code which you can see that 200 then there is a status that okay connection is established successfully you can see that there is a time on which the server has responded what type of protocol the server is using then there is a date there is a, a content length there is a timeout there is a maximum data that sender and receive can uh, transfer with each other all these things can be seen here and after the status and the header line there is a data in which the raw data of the website is there and when your browser receives this raw data your browser knows that how to convert this raw data into graphical form so you can see the website in very efficient way so you can see that the code is having different meaning for example if you are receiving the number 200 in the status line it means that the request is succeeded if you are receiving 301 it means that the website is moved to another uh, ip address or another location so please retry and access using that particular ip address if you are receiving 400 it means that bad request it means that the server is not able to understand what you are trying to access if you are if your computer is receiving 404 which is quite famous right it means that the document is not found so there are many other uh, numbers are there uh, from which you can understand that what type of problem is occurred or what is the current status now let's see the cookies so what is the cookies cookies means that when you are accessing any website for example you are opening the mintra website and you have seen a very fabulous jeans and you want to purchase that jeans after seeing that jeans so many times if you are trying to access any other website in every website after the mintra you will see that jeans in the advertisement so how other website knows that you are seeing that particular item in the shopping sites so the reason behind that is the cookies when you access the mintra website the server of the mintra are generating the cookie 
which contains some information regarding to your session so information such as who is the user what type of products you like what type of products you dislike all the information will be generated and that information will be sent to your computer and it will be stored in the cookies folder so when other website is trying to access your computer or you you are trying to access other website so some websites can access those cookies and from those cookies they will know that okay the user is interested in this particular product so let me show him this product or let me show him some products which is related to this product means the interest the client is having so using cookies uh, there are many advantages that it provides authorization shopping carts recommendation and user session state now let's see the web cache and the proxy server now what is the proxy server suppose you want to access the www.google.com so every time your computer is it sending data to the servers which are residing in the america because it is very far away from your country right so there are some proxy servers which exactly as same as the original server so all the information regarding to google server will be copied to the proxy server in the local area so when you try to access the www.google.com the proxy server will provide that web page so you can surf very quickly so that is the advantage of the proxy server because in some cases the servers are uh, present in another country or are very far away from where you are sitting so in that case it will take more time so if same data is stored in the servers which are near to you so communication can be made very quickly but in the proxy server uh, one thing we have to consider is that every time it has to refresh the data because there is a possibility that data in the original server is changed but in the proxy server it is not changed so in that case we will be receiving the old data and that is not good right so this is how the proxy server works and this is the end of the session thank you so much